Hello everyone, you might be wondering why some parts of this video are pixelated and why some parts of this video are also in black and white. It's because if I didn't do that, then YouTube would say that this video is inappropriate for advertisers. And although I may not agree with that, this is the only way this video can be monetized. So if you wish to see the uncensored and ad-free version of this video, along with many others, please go to patreon.com slash YMS for as little as a dollar, or you can click the join button underneath this video. Thank you. Hello, hello everybody, American Psycho, the uncut version. All right, ready spaghetti, everybody. I love this song. This is like one of the best opening monologues. My name is Patrick Bateman. My experience with this movie was that I loved it and I kept watching it over and over and I never understood the ending. And I would always forget how confusing it ends until I get there. And you can shake my hand and feel flesh gripping yours and maybe you can even sense our lifestyles are probably comparable. I simply am not there. Yeah, Christian Bale's awesome in this movie. This is Dorothea? Yes, dear. Courtney, you're gonna have a <laughs> peanut butter soup. Hello, Halbers. Oh, yeah, Jared Leto. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> the sound effect. I can't believe that Bryce prefers Van Patten's <laughs> card to mine. But the wait. voiceover makes it so much better. Yeah. Let's see Paul Allen's card. <laughs> <laughs> That shot. This is this is a great movie just for like a type of character study. Get a goddamn job, Al. You got a name. The way he speaks reminds me so much of Nick Fuentes. Just this like so much inauthenticity. Like everything's a constant performance. Would you like to hear the specials? Not if you want to keep your spleen. <laughs> but they don't have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so unimpressed. You have a dog. Little chow or something. Little chow. <laughs> In '87, Huey released this for their most accomplished album. I think they're undisputed masterpieces. It's so comical and satisfying. It's just iconic scene after iconic scene. It's crazy. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> Where'd the blood go? Continuity error. This is my very good friend, Patrick Bateman. He reminds me of Paul Dano. <laughs> if you mix Elijah Wood and Paul Dano. <laughs> Where did you get that overnight bag? Yeah, I think that's part of the point that they're ignoring what's going on. There's a Mr. Donald Kimball here to see you. Who? Kimball! Detective Donald Kimball. Yes. Willem. Love him. I know how busy you guys can get. He's so well cast for this, too. Everyone's really well cast. I hope I'm not being cross-examined here. You feel like that? No, not really. <laughs> Every scene is, yeah, they're like, hang out. bam, bam, bam. Like, yeah, just, you know, I've seen this movie so many times, but it's, it's just been, I haven't seen it in the last 10 years for sure. Willem's so perfect for this role. <laughs> Texas Chainsaw. All he does is exercise, watch porn, and watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> I want you to clean your vagina. <laughs> clean your vagina. I recognize her from something. Adaptation? I don't know. Dancer in the Dark? Oh, yeah! She's the husband of uh, the cop. Thank you. That's why I recognize her. Did I say husband? Girlfriend. What? Wife. <laughs> That's a very fine Chardonnay. You're not drinking. It's funny that he's trying to, like, impress the <laughs> with this status shit, as if they care that it's a fine Chardonnay, like... Get down on your knees so Sabrina can see your... <laughs> Sabrina, don't just stare at it. Eat it. <laughs> <laughs> he's just looking at himself the entire time. <laughs> don't touch the watch. Wow. He's a real el ah! or if el ah! ever got pussy. <laughs> he does kind of remind, like the way he talks is kind of ah! There are no, no girls, girls with good, good personalities. Personality. Uh, high five, bros. It's my business card. Oh! Oh no! The sound effect. Love it. <laughs> He's like, I can't kill this. He's too precious now. <laughs> Where are you going? I've got to return some videotapes. Got to return some videotapes. It's like the worst nightmare. He gets kissed by a gable. 
Not a big music fan, huh? You always too black sounding for me. Ooh, black sounding. Yeah, I didn't notice the black sounding line until now either, but it was the first time I'm watching it as a real adult and also with subtitles. Oh, he f oh. the cat. <laughs> she was just pretending. We're like halfway through the movie. This shit flies by. Can you keep it down? I'm trying to do drugs. <laughs> Can you keep it down? I'm trying to do drugs. It's so funny. You can only imagine just how many people he's killing every week, you know? <laughs> Meat bones. You need any help? Great shot. Love that. Jean. The way he's sitting on the couch looks exactly like Paul Allen looked earlier in the film, I think. He was probably wearing glasses because he was strung out on coke. He was hiding his, like, hangover or was probably up really late the night before. What a wonderful view. Jean? That's funny. For a long time, I was too focused on my work, but... I love that. <laughs> All the power tools. <laughs> Did you know that uh, Ted Bundy's first dog, a collie, was named Lassie? Who's Ted Bundy? I like how nobody knows who the serial killers he's talking about are. He's just obsessed and nobody else is. What's that? Duct tape. I like how that's his other uh, excuse, the videotape and then duct tape. What? No, put it in the cart. It's not going to ruin your fucking glass table, right. idiot. It's a gl you can just wipe that off with fucking... Windex. Don't forget you have a lunch date tomorrow with Donald Kimball at Smith and Walensky's. I can't hear the last name Kimball without thinking of Kimba and also Kindergarten Cop. Because isn't he named John Kimball? I haven't even seen Kindergarten Cop all the way through. <laughs> Where was Marcus? <laughs> the acting, I love it. His like sweat and anger. <laughs> that gif. <laughs> I love, I love, like, conceptually this movie, we're following this maniac. Like, it, it's almost stressful as to whether or not he'll be caught, but we're seeing it through his perspective. It's not, we're not seeing the movie through the cop's perspective. Like, the cop is almost a villain in a sense. I like movies like that. It's so much more of an interesting way to tell a story. Here's a check. Eight bergillion dollars. Robux. <laughs> I like how the driver is just doing this, too. Like, he's not the one driving. Paul Allen. I want the number, idiot. So anyway, I'm at Paul Norman's, and I'll try you again Paul later. Norman's. I don't see the canal bar. Did you know the Whitney Houston's debut LP? Constantly talking about musicians. But the greatest love of all is one of the best, most powerful songs ever written. It's impossible to empathize with others. We can always empathize mm. with ourselves. Wow, the way he interpreted that. Wow, a lot of crazy... A pizza box! <laughs> Completely naked. And the shoes. Love it. It's crazy how it hit her in the side and not, like, on top. I need to engage in homicidal behavior on a massive <laughs> scale. <laughs> assess the situation and uh, I'm going. <laughs> I've assessed Just the situation. <laughs> I have to return some videotapes. Yeah! Videotapes! It's so much fun. It's a fun movie. I really relate to the main character, I think. It's literally me. <laughs> oh, kitty. Nice. Well, if you insist. <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> so good. Can you just like start driving? Like, is he trying to get inside and just hide? Or did he forget what car he had? <laughs> Am I a video game? Is this free guy? Is free guy. A less psychopathic free guy. <laughs> hey, now don't forget to sign in. <laughs> oh, so good. He's, he panics and he's like, I have to kill everyone. Yeah, that, that expression was fantastic. I guess I've killed baby. 20 people, maybe 40. Imagine being his lawyer. <laughs> I, I love this performance. I have to kill a lot of people. 
Did, did this movie predict a coronavirus? Yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm waiting for the part where I, like, lose the ability to comprehend what the fuck the movie is doing. <laughs> but we're gonna see if I get it this time as a real adult. So this is him, like, back at his place, or what he thinks is his place. So the same things we saw the... It's Paul Allen's place? Yeah, okay, then. Are you sure? I'm looking for... Because I thought... Paul Allen's place. He thinks... Okay. You sure? Why is he there? You saw the ad in the Times? Yeah. There was no ad in the Times. <laughs> she's great. I feel like I've seen her somewhere, too. She's such a short character, but she does it really well. Downing all the pills. Patrick Bateman's office. Jane. Patrick Benzo's office. I'm... Where are you, Patrick I don't know if he's experiencing guilt. I don't know if guilt is what I would call it. He's like clearly concerned about himself. He, he thinks because he's killed too many people that he's going to be in trouble. That's not guilt. He's constantly talking about like how he doesn't think he's going to get away with it. And that's what makes him upset. Yeah, the paranoia. Hey, look, Bryce is back and he's drinking mineral water. Yeah, <laughs> what a queer. Mineral water sounds like such a scam. Yeah, naturally. Bateman killing Alan and the escort girls. That's fabulous. That's Nobody ever believes him. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. <laughs> Why? Not, you stupid bastard. There's a meme. It's crazy how little there is left in the film. Such a weird structure. He presents himself as this harmless old codger, but inside, but inside. But inside doesn't matter. This confession has meant nothing. Yeah, that's incredible. I love it. Still a 10? Yeah, it's a 10. I remembered the ending being a little different. I, uh, Mandela affected myself because I thought that the ending was like them saying he was Paul Allen or something, but it doesn't really change the way I interpret it. Like, he really is like kind of faceless and they keep calling him different names throughout the movie. When he's checking in, they were saying like, how is it going? Like Mr. Smith or something? Burning the midnight oil, Mr. Smith. The fact that they are constantly giving him different names, it's almost kind of like the two characters in funny games. Uh, except in this one, I think the thematic purpose of it is the way the film opens up, like the end of the monologue. He says like something bizarre, like behind the makeup and the expression on his face, he says, I simply am not there. And I think the movie is trying to get at the idea of him not even existing as like a person, but more so like a concept. I, I interpret like every killing and how he gets away with it is kind of like a heightened satirical version of reality and not like a literal sense. So so you can't really be asking questions like, how come nobody caught him doing this? Because that's kind of the point. I should make it clear to people who might not have like heard this interpretation before, like this is less about killing people. This is less about murder and it's more about like American consumerism and status and privilege and just like the sociopathic quest for wealth above all else this whole elite idea and how he's constantly comparing and trying to like do the social status thing with others and that's really all that matters to him it's trying to communicate this idea of like when you are your status when you are your physique there's some people where that's all you are and like the more obsessed with it you are the more that is you and the real you isn't there like i don't remember the exact quote he says i simply am not there and then at the end of the film he literally says but what's inside doesn't matter. Like, that's one of the last things we hear him say. There doesn't have to be a what happened in the film's universe thing. I, I don't think that what's happening is literal. Anyway, it's late. I gotta pee. I gotta sleep. I gotta sleep in my pee. Day two. All right, everybody. American Psycho 2. All American Girl. In the year 2002. So two years after the original. And it's directed by Morgan Freeman. <laughs> But not the Morgan Freeman, a man called Morgan J. Freeman, someone else. Oh boy, the frame rate. You know how some babysitters take you to the movies or rollerblading in the park? Shut up, Meg. All drugged up and tied to a chair. I like how they had him wearing a mask so they wouldn't have to get Christian Bale again. What the fuck? It doesn't look like it, but they couldn't even get anyone buff. The guy looks skinny. And it changed my life forever. <laughs> That was not, she didn't look like she was exerting much force there. Yes, everything's fine. The audio mixing shit. As for me, I was never tied to the scene. How are you never tied to the scene if that was your babysitter? 
Did no one know that that babysitter was babysitting you? I silently vowed to devote my life to stopping other psycho killers. Devote your life to stopping psycho killers now? So you are... I don't remember much about this movie, clearly. I was very confused when I watched this the first time. So yeah, what's funny is they are trying to go for like kind of a comedic tone with this. And I think it's based on how they interpreted the first movie. This is incredible. This soundtrack is horrendous, especially right after the first film. I'm glad we're watching them back to back. It's always great to have that perspective. Problem is, I don't have time for games. This voiceover, this narration compared to the original film. What's funny is there seems to be some social commentary missing. <laughs> it's like the most important part of the first movie. Is this a commentary on Whammon? death of serial killer Patrick Bateman. Good morning. Oh, it's him. William Shatner, the biggest red letter media hater of all time. There was a lot to think about with the dialogue in the first film. Not so much here. Is she wearing a shirt that says All American Girl? Because that's like the subtitle of the movie. Nobody comes close to my rock solid GPA. I don't like how she's saying any of this. And I do have some competition. Mila Kunis was well cast for that 70s show. I loved her in Black Swan. She doesn't have a lot of great roles, but she's done some good stuff. Like this, obviously. Yeah, she's like 10 when this movie came out. <laughs> 2002, how old was she? She was born in 83, so she was 19 when this movie came out. Oh yeah, how could I forget Jupiter Ascending? The fuck is this soundtrack? Also, you're 19 now. Patrick Bateman went, what year did you kill him? Was that supposed to be the 90s? Like he was killing people for like another decade after the first movie? Filling out the application is a mere formality. She is wearing a shirt that says All American Girl. <laughs> yes, there may be a few more hoops I have to jump through. I like how often she is like reaffirming her very clearly stated goals. It's for the people that walked into the theater like eight minutes late after the movie's already started. So they can be like, oh, this is directed DVD. Well, it's for the people who walked into their own living room late. Is worth two in the bush. Gertrude. This is set in 99, okay. Well, she sees my GPA after my cousin hacks into the mainframe. Hacks into their mainframe? <laughs> oh, here we go. This is so obvious. I could have guessed. I'm on the wiki. The screenplay for the film entitled The Girl Who Wouldn't Die originally had no association with American Psycho. <laughs> After production began, the script was altered to connect the film with the original. Yeah, I think that's how I described it without even knowing that fact. I'm like, it's a movie that has nothing to do with the original, and they just slapped the title on it. It's such an odd franchise to attach yourself onto, somehow. There's a commentary with Mila Kunis on it on the Blu-ray, apparently. Damn, I want the Blu-ray. I want to hear this fucking commentary. If it wasn't called American Psycho 2, I think it would be at least two points higher on IMDb. People love dumb horror movies. Come to mama! It's weird how, like, goofy the tone is when that was not the original at all. Hilarious. I don't think it would last... I don't think it would last 20 seconds in a microwave. I think microwaves fuck you up. That obvious ketchup. Like, that's the shittiest fake blood. This song reminds me of another song. It's like they use temp music or something else. That's a strong ass frame. This is hilarious. Oh my God. What's funny is I'm pretty sure I watched this movie more than once when I was younger. I don't know why. I don't think I rented it more than once. I think it was back when I burned DVDs. I was running an illegal operation in my junior high where f friends would pay me to burn DVDs for them. <laughs> I have a paper to write. A paper. Her motivations are very shit, and so far there's no connection between what she's doing and what the beginning of the film showed. She said she wanted to, like, kill serial killers, but then she's just, like, trying to get, like, a good spot at the FBI now. She's trying to get a good grade. I just throw stuff out there. I wonder if she's going to wear that shirt the entire movie. <laughs> God, I can't believe you're actually going out with Brian. I know. Really? No, not really. This writing is so shit. The A and B camera shot, reverse shot also is just like close on their face. Zero creativity. Like, it's just so... It's, it's the boor most boring way you could possibly film that scene in terrible dialogue. Oh, look. American Psycho was classic scene after classic scene. It was such an enjoyable, exhilarating watch. This is a slog, to put it nicely. 
This is an insanely boring movie. There's no shit I only remember like the ending. <laughs> Typically, if I don't remember much about a movie in my childhood, I'm like, oh, I want to revisit it so that I can figure out what, what happened. Typically, it means it was boring as shit, and I just didn't have the ability to remember that it was boring as shit. Reminds you of May? May is... I remember May being a lot better than this. I should watch May and May, even though it's a Halloween movie. I'll let you be my dreams if I can be in yours. This is insanely bad. Nothing's happening and it's so boring. It's yeah. Um, this music. Is she also supposed to be drunk? This is very bad acting for whatever the fuck's happening. This is so bad. Th why? How much? How long do you need that scene to be? There were so many cuts. They cut it down, and it was just them like going in the like. That was the most awkward thing. Like that was the result of like no direction. That was the director saying like, okay, now like pretend you like got the wrong door and like. Sh sh Pretend you're like drunk and you're trying not to make any noise. And then they just winged it and they went on for like a minute and they cut it down. We can stop if you want. All right, are we gonna see full penis? Are we gonna get a brown bunny? I haven't even seen that movie yet. I should watch that on stream. See, now she's wearing the same hoodie as whoever killed the previous character. So it shouldn't be, it's not gonna be a twist, right? It's heavily implied it's her, right? <laughs> that sound effect. Ah. Uh, She's sleeping on a bed made of Doritos. Doritos! Is that video gone from YouTube, by the way? Doritos? Doritos! Piss sheet. A piss sheet. Exhilarating. Put your hands somewhere else. What are you doing? You can turn around. Yep. Got him. I just killed Brian. Yep. I just killed Brian. This is crazy. <laughs> yep. I just killed Brian. Once at the FBI, I'll be in the position to stop dozens. Okay. Yeah. It's not a twist. She's just killing people. This is supposed. They probably think this is such a compelling character study of how she's justifying it. Oh my god. And together we ask the questions that will lead you to your answers. I don't think any psychiatrist would ever say that. You're not selling them on the idea that they're getting answers. That's a shit way of, oh my God. I'm gonna give you answers. Yeah, this is like Dexter season eight. Harrison. <laughs> it's crazy that William Shatner's in this. <laughs> I think I've identified this person as a textbook sociopath. This is crazy that they're having this. This is, that's unethical, by the way. If you're a psychiatrist, you can't do this. That that goes against the code of ethics that they have. Well, you know, I can't do that. I've already broken the law by placing this call. Yeah, you did. You broke the law. This is crazy. Why would you do this? She's already identified three of her peers as enemies. Dr. Daniels? This is so stupid. You know, I am such a textbook in that case sometimes. The way she enunciates is like she just read the lines for the first time. Like there was no rehearsal. How old is she? She's slurring her words like all the time. I'd be lost without subtitles. Like some of the words just like blend into each other. Was she not able to? Actually, Rachel, we're divorced. The music's like destroying any tension that could be here. You know what? If it was, if this was a male, they wouldn't be playing this music. I think it's the fact that it's a female serial killer, they're like, oh, it's funny now. I think that's part of it. It's a silly serial killer. I want to be dressed to kill. Dressed to kill, get it? This music is so weird. Now I'm late. This is a disaster. Bitch. Bitch. Why'd you come by my room last night to borrow a rubber? He went home right after dinner. I like how they had to explain where she got the condom from. Why'd you come to my room last night to borrow a rubber? Like she couldn't have just lied? and had one, they had to explain that. It's like you're not even here. It's like you're not even here, like the original American Psycho. Remember the line? There's nothing not here. Inside doesn't matter. I am simply not there. This is funny bad. It's very boring, but it's funny how bad it is. You don't want anyone to know about you and Bobby. Shot, reverse shot, close face, whatever. Like, stop doing it this way. Morgan Freeman, you are annoying. Don't let me down. Don't worry. And also, did the background change? Okay, it's later. Like, why? That's a weird transition. Just fucking kill everybody. Hi, it's Cassandra. I can't get to the phone right now, so leave a quickie. Leave a quickie. Dr. Daniels? She's trying to get the TA job 
for William Shatner so that she can be in a better position to kill serial killers later. Yeah, she's killing her competition. Yes, I think she's murdered three people in the innocent people. She murdered Catwoman, Boy Baby, and Girl Boss. Ed Gein, very famous serial killer. This music is insane. It's it's funny to pay someone to make your movie worse. You have the film. And you pay a musician to make it worse. Please make this movie more shit, they said. I'm not jumping to any conclusions here. She can't speak properly. <laughs> she speaks like Derek Savage in this movie. <laughs> She's, she has a problem. <laughs> Have a good day, Doctor. She reads her lines like characters and Megan is missing. How was he perceived? Why is he a Nazi? You don't agree, Ms. Newman? She's still wearing that shirt! How many days has it been? That person behind her is like 40 or on meth. <laughs> and he littered the dumping sites with evidence using the utmost caution. Utmost caution. What is the casting here? I don't know why they would cast me like like Kunitz. It's, it's like, it's kind of an annoying choice, you know? Unfortunately, in this class, we stick to the facts. And these facts don't care about your feelings. Why? This music is trying so hard. I definitely saw this movie like more than once when I was younger. You know what probably happened? I probably saw it when I was 13, forgot all about it, and then saw it again when I was 14 or something. I remember watching this for a second time somehow. I wasn't about to watch years of hard work go down the drain. It was time to pick Keith's brain. I would not use music like this for my videos. It's so shit. They're absolutely brilliant. Me. But a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do. Why is everyone in the class dying? <laughs> there doesn't seem to be any, like, investigation happening, actually. That's kind of what's missing from this movie. <laughs> Where's Willem Dafoe, you know? Oh, boy. The she whose name we agreed not to say aloud. Jing Ping? Xi Xi Ping? But she wasn't crazy. Okay, well, I'm sorry you disagree, Bobby. But you see <laughs> well, I'm sorry you disagree. I know there's a dead girl, but like, whoa. Just, I don't know why you... Stop arguing with me. Jeez. I'm not wrong. You weren't sleeping with her. So, if you're confused, William Shatner said she killed herself because he thinks... The psychiatrist never said which student, just that it's a female that's being crazy. And they're both being vague. And so he thinks the one who killed herself, who didn't, is the one he was warning him about. Could I give you some advice? No. I want Valium. <laughs> Hello? Oh, benzodiazepines are so useful. You just have to not abuse them. <laughs> In other words, there'll be no TA position for next semester. No one's talking about how two or three people in the class have been murdered. Surely they had to find the library guy's body. In the original American Psycho, they're at least aware of the lack of consequences. This film doesn't seem to be implying that. I believe I am the most qualified for this position. For this position. For this position. There's nobody knows it, especially Mila, like just can't say their lines properly. I thought this part was happening at the end of the movie, but it's not. Just relax, Bobby. Maybe I just stopped watching. <laughs> Maybe I didn't finish the movie the other times I watched it. I thought this was the ending. Bobby, what's wrong? Don't fuck with me. Don't fuck with me. That necklace. Don't fuck with me. A necklace. What? William Shatner, has he been good ever? Or is he just like a, like people like him because he's been around for a while? Like he, he's always kind of shit, isn't he? <laughs> is there a good performance from William Shatner? Miss Congeniality? Okay, we'll see. You're confused, how do you think I feel? Has anybody, those, those musical albums that Shatner released are so weird. Where he just like talks instead of singing. It's like, would you like me to speak popular songs? Rocket Man. That was six years ago. Oh. Why are they saying six years ago? How old was she? You were in Patrick Bateman's apartment. Oh, it was in his apartment? How come nobody knows that Clara was babysitting you? How come nobody knows this? How come she wouldn't have been connected to the crime scene? Who hired her to babysit? 
Where are her parents? The frame rate is so funny. The sound effect every time it cuts. Ding! Don't you threaten my family. Ah! Oh, so now you care ah! about your family. Ah! Stop! Break Stop! I can't take it anymore! Ah! Please, no more. <laughs> ah! What? What? He just fell. Ah! She... She she saw that he was off balance and went just just to be cool. He fell on his own, and she noticed it with her hyper uh, balance noticing skills. You can see a person in the reflection. Oh, that was him. Okay, never mind. Sweet dreams. She's just killing people for no reason, really. You gonna get that? You gonna get that TA job still? Whoever allowed this to be called American Psycho? So okay, how did she do that? How does she do that? How strong is she? He's a little out of it tonight. What the fuck just happened? Did she just disappear in front of him? What? Like, but the camera cut. <laughs> it did a strain. The strangers. It cuts and then they're gone. Even though the character is still looking. It's Eric. I felt bad about the other day. I just wanted to call you and say I was sorry. And I hope you got the prescription filled okay. It seems like nothing's happening outside of the very strict narrative, you know? I love screenplays where it feels like the, the characters have more to do than what we're seeing on screen. But it's so funny. He's like, cut to this guy. He's like, oh, I hope you got your prescription filled that I was talking about in the last scene I was in. It's like, nothing else happens in your life. You're just exclusively concerned with basic things that the script told us. Rachel Newman, are you sure? But I thought she killed herself because we never said anyone's names because it would be illegal even though it was already illegal for me to talk about it. And I wanted to warn him, but I didn't. I wanted to be very vague about it. It's crazy. Bye. Bye. Bye, Mary. Bye. Oh my god. That's crazy. I swore that that was the end of the movie from the, the other, in my memory. That's two, we're two thirds through the movie. I think I might have just stopped watching. Dad, we made Is, it. Princess. <laughs> Her dad looks like that porn actor that got canceled. Ron Jeremy, yeah. <laughs> a more tall Ron Jeremy. He looks like a Mario. Well, is this restaurant reasonably priced? What was the restaurant in American Psycho called? Started with a D. Dorsha's? Dorcia. Yeah. You really gotta get maintenance up here. Well, at, with the Cloverfield sequels, at least it was like a producer attached to the original movie that made that decision. This was just like the studio. I think it was just Lionsgate. Lionsgate has made a bunch of shit decisions. The last two Saw films that they greenlit, like, abysmal decisions. Like, you're insane. Either make a better movie, or just don't make it. Saw X I do have some hope for, because it's Kevin Grudert. I trust Kevin more than I trust Chris Rock and the S Spearg brothers. <laughs> Stainless steel. It's me, Mario. Anyway. I know we're going to eat dinner at some point. <sighs> oh, man. Uh, Excuse me. I'm gonna go use the restroom. Don't forget to wash your hands. Now, where's my steak knife? Where's my steak knife? <laughs> she couldn't have taken someone else. She couldn't have taken her own knife. She had to steal her. <laughs> I like how we needed an expression for that explanation. Look at the font on the restaurant. Look at that font. That's that's no restaurant would use that. Font. Not even in 2000. Not even in the years 1999 with it. Like, that is a shitty, like, that was, oh, that's like an arcade font. Ultra, uh, steak knife. That guy looks like a young Jerry Seinfeld. I'll need some water so I can take my pills. My pills. <laughs> so I can take my pills. I realize that I can't let my mother get the best. Oh, this is just like when Patrick Bateman stared in the mirror and talked in his head. Ready to order? I need my pills. That shitty plastic straw in that drink, holy shit. It, it's so funny that in the context of this film, it's supposed to be a fancy restaurant, but like clearly the director's never been to one. <laughs> like the props department got confused. I, I just love that hat. What? I like this psychiatrist is so hopeless. She's walking all over me. I can't do anything. I can't report her to anyone. There's been like, I don't know, five people directly associated with her that have died mysteriously now. I guess they haven't found any body except the one they explicitly showed that they found. We have one and like five missing people at this point. <laughs> like the library guy they never found, I guess. Could I have a word with you for a moment? Reporter. <laughs> 
She's hella size. She's an Amogus. I know it. Let's just say a mutual friend told me that he found you hanging. Why would you say this? He found her. Her who? Her who? It's not that important. The music is some of the worst shit ever. It's fascinating just how how badly they wanted this film to be ruined further from what it already was. A boy. A boy. Yes, it's a boy. It's to me, oh, Mario. Bobby Starkman. That's the name of her professor. Whoa. It's crazy how I even remembered that. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what? What happened in that scenario? Like, I almost I almost just didn't even react to it because it's just, this movie is so stupid. <laughs> he stabbed his hand. <laughs> like, what? I want to see how that went down. This music doesn't stop. That's a shit shirt. Like I said, it was a false alarm. Well, how do you know it was the right girl? We don't ask for ID. Well, there's only one Rachel Newman registered at West Washington. It had to be her. Because we're cops, you know. People could just say who they are and we believe them. I hate how they're just like, they paid the composer to make like, I don't know, 20 seconds worth of music and they're just looping it. Hey, Bobby, it's me. I'm this small town has no ethics. They have one psychiatrist and like a couple cops and they're all corrupt. Lies. But actually, I like your name too. You used a coat hanger? Why is this even a twist? Like she killed someone, stole her identity. Why does it matter? Like it's not, how is this a reveal? <laughs> just some random woman. I don't know why this is considered like any kind of a reveal. This is just, it's, it's no wonder I forgot about the whole last third of the movie. Cause it's like the plot we were following just kind of ends. She just does random killings for the last half hour of the movie for no reason. Even if her goal was silly in the first two thirds, at least there was some sort of goal she was following. And then it's just like, she kills William Shatner and then it's like, okay, now what? The body in the library disappeared because the this is an old video game and it despawned. Oh, she's listening to the best music on the radio. <laughs> I'll hit you up real good. Okay, just be careful. She's a loose cannon. Just be careful. She's a loose cannon. <laughs> <laughs> ah, why? How did the car chase even start? They happened to be driving while she happened to be driving. I, I think that was a Newman girl. I can't believe that they made the music diegetic. It's to represent the craziness in her head. She, she keeps playing the same music because she likes it. Woo, the song's over. Imagine what it would be without me. Like, it would be not as bad. It would still be a bad movie, but it would it would be like much better without the music. You could have like actual scenes. Where the heck's our lady friend? Where the heck's our lady friend? Uh, don't shoot or anything. That, wow, wow. That's some real maps to the stars fire. That's crazy. I like how it was like, I like how it was like 50% transparency. You could see like two layers. They were both like 50% transparency layers for some reason. Walter West Washington Studio. Oh, they finally found the body. <laughs> they finally found the, the body in the library. Also was Ronald, was that Ronald Reagan checking the dumpster? As a case study, oh. Rachel Newman was as rare as they come. <laughs> she was more obsessed than Dahmer. More obsessed more than Dahmer. Certainly more faceless than Bateman. More faceless than Bateman? Why? Perfect world. Oh, they're bringing it back. One in a billion. I mean, the sequence of events is very unlikely, if that's what you mean. I wish I had a chance to study her mind more. Yeah, but we only had 10 minute sessions because she was weird. <laughs> I don't charge by the hour. <laughs> Rachel Newman is one in a billion. Why? Not really. One in a billion. Yeah, that's your title, huh? Say it again. She's in a league of her own. He can't enunciate properly. Is he Scottish? Is his accent coming through? He's like Irish or something. The people aren't always what they seem to be. The people aren't what... There's a bit of his accent coming through. Can we... Somebody edit in the scene from Saw 7, where Jigsaw gets his book signed. It's a pleasure. Who should I make it out to? John. Thanks for the signature. <laughs> ah! 
Your work is so inspiring. Uh. Ah! If you could be anyone in the world besides yourself. Elizabeth McGuire, obviously. Elizabeth McGuire. Remember I said that? What, Eric? One in a billion? She doesn't even want to kill him. She just wants to intim intimidate him a little and leave. <laughs> Elizabeth McGuire. You mean Agent McGuire. No one? No. Like, okay. She was still attending classes after? Like, might her face have been in the news or something? She just goes back to class like, I'm a different person now, actually. <laughs> She's got a fake mustache. Which is ever so flawed. Flawed. Ever, so, which is ever so flawed. Aren't you gonna get investigated for this? Why are you here at daytime? Done nothing at all. That sound effect was like a fucking casino slot machine. Bro! <laughs> Directed by Morgan Freeman. Yes. Vagina Kernjel. Thank you. Craig Laptop. Hope you never meet Neil Breen. Donna Wong, anybody? Okay, this was one out of 10. Yep. I'm glad I got to experience it again because this was something that I watched several times when I was younger. And there was a weird sense of nostalgia, at least for the idea of revisiting it. It wasn't like a nostalgic experience revisiting it, but there was a sense of nostalgia attached to the idea of revisiting it. Very bad. I don't know what else to say.